In my last video, I was holding this camera and someone noticed that I have a UV filter on my lens and they said, never put cheap glass on top of high quality glass. Now this is something I've heard in the photo and video community a lot and it's something I used to believe myself, but in my experience, it's just not the case. So today I wanna go in depth a little bit and test out whether or not a UV filter is actually making a difference with your image quality. So I did some testing, taking photos with and without the UV filter at different apertures and different focal lengths to compare the images and see if there is a noticeable difference in the quality. But before we get into that, I wanna talk a little bit about what a UV filter actually does and why I use them. The traditional use for a UV filter is exactly what it sounds like. It filters out UV light from hitting your sensor. Now this was a much bigger deal when everyone was shooting on film because the UV light could actually affect the film. This isn't really much of a problem anymore with digital cameras. So the whole filtering UV light Thing isn't actually that important. The main reason to use a UV filter is to protect your lens. It acts as a sacrificial surface on the front of your lens in case you drop it or you get little micro scratches, which is inevitable over time. The idea is that if you drop your lens and crack the front of it, at least you're just cracking a little cheap piece of glass instead of a multiple thousand dollar lens. Now I will say this can also be accomplished to some effect by using a lens hood. Personally, I'm not a big fan of lens hoods. I feel like they kind of get in the way. They do serve a purpose and definitely have their use, but I don't love to use them. And although they can protect your lens from a drop because they kind of shield the front element, they're not as good at protecting your lens as a UV filter is. Because yes, one of the things you're protecting it from is a drop, but especially if you use a lens for a long time, which if you're buying an expensive lens like this 70 to 200 or this 24 to 70 you're probably planning on doing over time with dust and little fragments of dirt and sand touching your lens and you wiping it off and cleaning it you're going to get a lot of little micro scratches on your lens now these micro scratches aren't the biggest deal in the world you usually can't tell and they don't affect image quality that much but over time they can add up and it's still something that you probably want to avoid. So if a UV filter lives on the front of your lens, this is going to become much less of a problem. All right, so to the testing. For reference, I'm taking photos with my Canon R6 Mark II, which is a 24 megapixel sensor. The lens I'm using is my Canon RF 24-70 f2.8 L lens. And the UV filters that I use on both my 24-70 and my 70-200 are the Tiffin brand UV filters. You can buy these on Amazon. I paid about $30 Canadian for each of them. And that's where this whole idea comes in about don't put a cheap piece of glass in front of an expensive piece of glass because the glass in your camera is a much better quality. And I'm not saying there's no such thing as filters wrecking your image quality. I've definitely used a couple ND filters that made my image look really soft and added a terrible color tint to them. So it's not to say you can just buy whatever at UV filter and this will work, but these are relatively inexpensive filters that I'm using. And as you'll see, there's not a whole lot of difference. So let's get into the testing. I took five different images with and without the filter at both 24 millimeters and 70 millimeters. The focal length here doesn't really affect anything too much, but I just wanted to show a little bit of variety. I also took the images at varying apertures because as some people might know, things that are very close to the camera and even on the camera, like scratches or a UV filter, are gonna be a lot more out of focus and harder to see even if they are there when you're shooting at a lower aperture. So to give us a chance at having some of these scratches or cheap glass effects show up in the image, I shot all the way up to f11. The first photo was at f2.8, and if we zoom in on both of these images, as you can see, there's not really much of a difference. This is at 100% zoom, meaning in this 4K video, one pixel of the photo is appearing as one pixel in the video. This essentially just means that if we zoom in any further, the image will start to look pixelated. But with that in mind, we still can zoom in further to look at it in a little more detail. And as you can see, there's not that much of a difference. Let's go up to F4 and you'll notice pretty much the same thing. The background's starting to get a little bit more in focus. But other than that, the images both look really sharp. F5.6 and F8 are no different here. And spoiler alert, F11. Again, a lot of the images in focus at this point, but we're still not really seeing any imperfections show up or any detail lost. And if you're still a UV filter skeptic, you might be saying, well, you're just taking photos really close up of this little Lego dude in your office. That's not an example of a real world scenario. And although I think realistically it gets the point across, here are some real world examples anyways. These are all photos that I've taken with my 24 to 70 or my 7200 with UV filters on. I'll zoom in here for you on each of these shots. And although I don't have a comparison before and after, as you can see, these shots when zoomed in are still really crisp. And maybe your opinion is different, but when I zoom in on these images, I've never said to myself, man, I wish these images were sharper or they're lacking some kind of level of quality. Also by using the close-up miniature example, it gives the best opportunity for imperfections from the filter to show up in the image because the focal distance is focusing as close as possible, which means anything close to the lens on the filter will also be in focus as much as it possibly can be. This effect would be diminished even more when shooting something at 
infinite focal distance like a landscape because the camera is focusing past any imperfections that are on the lens and way off into the distance. So there you go. This is why I use UV filters on my lenses and why I'll continue to because realistically there are no negative side effects to having these on my lenses. And I've already owned these lenses and these UV filters for a few years, which means they're actually a little bit scratched up already. I haven't dropped my lenses or anything, but like I said, you get little micro scratches over time, whether you brush it against something by accident, you just get some dust on it and wipe it off. So this actually works as a pretty good real world example because I'm not using brand new UV filters. If nothing goes wrong, I will probably be using these lenses for another 10 years. And in that time without UV filters, the front element could develop a lot of little scratches on it. Enough that eventually it might affect my image quality. But right now, if the scratches build up to the point where I am noticing a difference, I can just take off my $30 UV filter, throw it out, and buy another one. So that wraps up this video. It's a pretty simple test, pretty simple concept, but I think I proved my point. Let me know in the comments if you use UV filters or if you don't, why not? If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.